The man behind some of the most memorable structures in the world, Bill Whitaker introduces us to legendary architect Frank Gehry. For him, design is a family affair. I think I would have wanted to be an architect. Yeah. I love this. I love it's this. It's not too late. I <laughs> so says the architect Frank Gehry, who at 92 is not resting on his substantial laurels. While standing outside his landmark Disney Concert Hall in downtown Los Angeles, we looked over at his new project going up across the street. That's a hotel, that's an apartment building, and then you have retail. Change in the face of LA again. Why not? Why not? Seeking the answer to that question has led Frank Gehry to change city skylines around the globe. He and I first met in 2003 as Disney Hall was about to open. See how these curves relate to those up there. If the inside comforts, the outside amazes. This is a curve and that curve leads you into here. It fits in, yeah. Now almost 20 years later, it is the iconic building of Los Angeles. People come from all over the world to see this. Wow. What is, what is that like for you to have created something like this? Well, I see what I would do different. <laughs> Seriously, that's what you see? A little bit of that, yeah. What I mean, I sounds see. like second guessing, Frank Gehry calls creative insecurity. His constant questioning and his love of art are lifelong traits. He was born Frank Goldberg in Toronto, Canada. His father moved the family to Los Angeles in 1947. Gary arrived at age 17. My father met me at the train, and it just looked like a new world somehow. I, I was quite moved by it. Los Angeles provided a fresh start, and as he began his career in architecture, Goldberg became Gary. As his reputation grew, so did his family. In 1975, Gary married Berta Aguilera, his second wife. They had two boys. He had two daughters from a previous marriage. It was in the 1970s when he renovated his private home in Santa Monica using industrial materials that he first gained national attention on his front yard. So what did you think when the tour buses showed up? Go away and leave me alone. <laughs> Don't bother me. <laughs> Gary would prefer that his buildings draw the attention, like the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, Spain, or the Louis Vuitton Foundation in Paris. Gary's free-flowing forms and unexpected angles have left an impression highlighted in The Simpsons that he has no plan, no discipline. <gasps> Frank Gary, you're a genius. The, you know, the, the impression, thanks to The Simpsons, is that a lot of your designs are, are extemporaneous, or even, even unplanned, and that is not true. No, so later in this interview, I'm going to show you the number of models and the iterations on a project and how long it took to get to the conclusion. Playful, light, surprising, graceful, his creations invite the eye, draw you in, embrace you. That personal touch has won him acclaim all over the world. Gary's inspiration might seem a little surprising. I started drawing fish in all my building projects. To build a giant fish for the 1992 Barcelona Olympics, he adapted software created for the aerospace industry. Suddenly, his infinite imagination could take physical shape. Did this technology free you up in some way? Did it awaken something? Uh, yeah, it? Well, it allowed you to, to explore the movement that I was being inspired by the fish. So you, you see the movement. Movement is feeling. And how do you get a big monster building to have any feeling? And the movement makes that happen. And I think that finding a way to build it was the, was the issue. He found his way with the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao. It immediately was hailed a masterpiece when it opened in 1997. The aerospace software provided builders with precise calculations for shaping titanium that covers the curving exterior. So when you go there, you see the light play with the building. 
especially on gray days when you really want some light, you want a feeling of warmth, all of a sudden this metal glows beautifully. It's a draw. People come from far and wide to see your building. Yeah, I feel good about that. Work is the engine that drives Frank Gehry. At his design firm in Santa Monica, there are models of almost every iteration of every project. It's a wonderland for a fan of architecture. And Gary, as promised, gave us a tour. So where does it start? I don't know. We it's traveled the world in here, yeah. seeing his current global projects in miniature. There's the newly opened Arts Foundation in Arles, France, where painter Vincent van Gogh spent some of his final years. Every block is just a little bit yeah. twisted. Gary's tallest towers will rise in Canada. That's Toronto, my home and native land. Gary Partners is a family affair. His son, Alejandro, is an artist who is painting the exteriors of a private residence designed by his father in Mexico. So I painted just more abstract looking pieces, some that are a little bit more geometric and tried both on these canopies. Clearly, it works. Yes, it's been wood pretty yeah. good. And Gary's wife, Berta, has been keeping the books for 45 years. <laughs> so this really is a mom and pop shop. Steel, yes. Yeah, so we are trying to find copper. Sam Gary is an architectural designer for his father's firm. They collaborated on the design of Frank and Berta's new Santa Monica home. You're working at one of the top design firms in the world and you go in there and everyone's a family. And I think it inspires to bring a lot out of people and to bring the best out of them. I've been talking to your dad all day. What you just said is the first time that the truth has been spoken, <laughs> that this is one of the top design firms in the world, started by yeah. this gentleman right here, mm. your dad. <laughs> That's a heavy dude. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Someone had to say it. So what's the greatest lesson you've learned from your dad? Oof. I, I'd say it's just that questioning of things you do. Maybe it's that creative insecurity that I'm building slowly. <laughs> <laughs> that questioning is actually a challenge from Frank Gehry to all architects to elevate the art of their design. Think of people and how they're going to be inspired by your work and give them something to think about. That's what a painting does. That's what a sculpture does. And architecture is an art. So why not?